Hello, and thank you for attending my presentation. My name is Tomoko Hashimoto. Today, I would like to make a presentation about the following. Informal and formal cooperative learning, the sequence of engagement matter. In other words, I would like to look into whether or not the order in which students practice informal and formal cooperative learning makes a difference. Here is a brief outline of my presentation. Today, I will talk about the quantitative part of an ongoing larger mixed method study, which includes a qualitative approach. First, my research question. This is, how does the sequence of engaging in informal and formal cooperative learning affect EFL students' motivation in a university classroom? and students' perceived basic psychological needs presented in Ryan and DC's self-determination theory. I am interested in this question because although NEXT is calling for more active learning in classrooms, the desired outcomes of this in higher education have not yet been attained, as pointed out by Yasunaga 2019. As a practicing teacher at a university in Japan, I have first-hand experience that this is true. If active learning is supposed to work, but I feel that its effects are inconsistent, maybe I'm doing something wrong. I long for more information on cooperative learning, one form of active learning involving group activities, to obtain information which may help create a better learning environment for my students. Thus, I embarked on a journey to find out how the different sequence of informal and formal cooperative learning affects students' motivation. Before going any further, let me define important terminology. I would like to define the following key terms, basic psychological needs, motivation, and cooperative learning. First, let me explain about the basic psychological needs. The concept of BPNs is introduced in one of the six mini-theories of self-determination theory. Ryan and DC say that there are three BPNs. These are autonomy, competence, and relatedness. Autonomy refers to willingness and choice. When this need is satisfied, one feels in control of one's own actions and the decisions that are being made. When this is not satisfied, one feels they lack control and that the cause of their behavior lies outside of them. Competence concerns the feeling of mastery and effectiveness. When this need is satisfied, one feels capable and experiences opportunities to use one's expertise. On the contrary, when the need for competence is not met, one may experience a feeling of helplessness. Relatedness relates to feeling connected to one's social environment. If this need is fulfilled, one feels bonded and cared for, but if it is frustrated, one may feel a sense of loneliness. In relation to motivation, it is believed that if BPNs are met, intrinsic motivation is enhanced. On the contrary, if they are not met, it is said that intrinsic motivation is impaired. In relation to BPNs, I mention intrinsic motivation. Intrinsic motivation is cons considered to be the most self-determined motivation type in self-determination theory proposed by Ryan and DC. What then is motivation as defined within SBT? According to Ryan and DC, motivation concerns what moves people to action. Self-determination theory emphasizes the various types and sources of motivation which affect dynamics and quality of behavior. It concerns motivation which underlies people's choices and its reinforcing or impeding conditions. Another mini-theory of SDT is Organismic Integration Theory, or OIT. In OIT, there are three types of motivation. One, intrinsic motivation. Two, extrinsic motivation, which is broken down into four subcategories according to varying degrees of autonomy. And three, a motivation. Intrinsic motivation is doing something for the inherent satisfaction of conducting the activity. The other main form of motivation is extrinsic motivation, which Ryan and DC 2000 explain as doing something because of the instrumental value of the behavior, such as getting good grades. 
The four subtypes of regulation within extrinsic motivation are integrated, identified, interjected, and external regulation. Each regulation is associated with a different degree of internalization. In addition to these two, there is also a motivation, the state of lacking the will to act. Here you see the continuum of relative autonomy, which depicts the various degrees of internalization of behavioral regulation. There are three types of motivation and the four regulatory types within extrinsic motivation, which indicate different degrees of internalization. Cooperative learning is when students work together towards a common goal. The goal is to reach a desired future state of confidence or mastery in the subject area being studied as a group. Cooperative learning proposed by Johnson, Johnson, and Holubik, 1993, or Johnson, Johnson, and Smith, 1991 and 2014, has three types, informal, formal, and cooperative faith groups. In this study, I looked at informal and formal cooperative learning. Informal cooperative learning concerns two to three students per group. These groups are made ad hoc. Informal cooperative learning lasts for a maximum of one lesson and involves tasks. Formal cooperative learning is composed of three to four students per group and usually lasts for several lessons. Project work is often conducted in formal cooperative learning. Now that I have gone over important terminology, next let me explain methods for my study. Participants were first-year university students in the Department of Early Childhood Education and Care. Three classes were involved. In April 2019, Class 1 had 24 students, Class 2 had 34, and Class 3 had 36. This totaled 94 students. Their average English level was A1 level and uh, SAFAR, Common European Framework of Reference, according to an Oxford placement test, an online standardized English test conducted in April 2019. Class 1 participated in informal cooperative learning, then formal cooperative learning. Class 2, formal cooperative learning, then informal cooperative learning. And Class 3 took part in informal and formal cooperative learning alternately throughout the year. The study compared and contrasted motivation and BPNs for Class 1, 2, and 3. In other words, it investigated the differences and similarities of the students who participated in various sequences of informal and formal cooperative learning. Length of study was from April 2019 to January 2020, or the 2019 academic year. This was composed of a spring semester lasting 15 weeks and a fall semester which lasted for the same length. The instruments used were the following. To measure motivation in BPNs, Agawa and Takeuchi 2016's questionnaire was used. This scale was created with an aim to validate SDT in the Japanese EFL context. Taking Hiromori 2006's questionnaire as a model, they tested content validity of the instrument and modified it. As a result, items in identified regulation and introduced regulation in Ryan and DC's continuum of relative autonomy were put together to form a factor coined identified motivation. All items prepared for external regulation were put under a factor named external motivation. The same approach was taken for intrinsic and a motivation respectively. Items for integrated regulation were not included in Agawa and Takeuchi scale, possibly due to the difficulty of creating specific items for this. Although integrated regulation is a form of extrinsic motivation, the degree of internalization is greater than the other subtypes of extrinsic motivation, hence having a greater degree of autonomy. A five-point Likert scale was used for students to rate their perceived autonomy, competence, and relatedness. Five equaled strongly agree, and one equaled strongly disagree. The procedure was as follows. At lesson one of the spring semester, the following were explained to students what cooperative learning is, details about the study, and ethical considerations. Those who agreed to participate in the study answered Agawa and Takeuchi's questionnaire. Students participated in cooperative learning from lessons 4 through 13, excluding lesson 8, 
and at lesson 14 took Agawa and Takeuchi questionnaire for a second time. In the fall semester, students participated in quadruple learning from lessons 2 to 11, excluding lesson 7. At lesson 14, Agawa and Takeuchi's questionnaire was administered for the third and final time. Results were obtained from analysis conducted by IBM SPSS version 26. Two ANOVAs were conducted according to class at the three data gathering points. Results will be presented on charts according to class and subtypes of motivation, as well as class and VPNs. Arrows indicate a significant increase or decrease at the 5% level in mean scores. Here are the results. First, motivation. Numbers under each class indicate the following. 1 equals April to July of 2019 for the spring semester. 2 equals July 2019 through January 2020 or the fall semester. And 3 equals April 2019 through January 2020 or the 2019 academic year. Since I am comparing sequence of cooperative learning over the year, Please focus on column 3 within each class, which is the annual result. For class 1 and 3, intervention over the year raised intrinsic, identified, and extrinsic motivation. For class 2, identified and extrinsic motivation increased significantly over the year, but intrinsic motivation was unaffected. None of the CL types had a significant effect on A motivation. Examining BPNs, perceived autonomy rose as a year for class one and three. Perceived autonomy went up in the spring semester for class two, but declined in the fall semester. This led to perceived autonomy not showing a significant difference over the course of a year. Perceived competence over the year rose for all classes. Perceived relatedness rose in the spring semester, then declined in the fall semester, resulting in no significant difference over the year for class 1, 2, and 3. Results showed that class 1 and 3's motivation subtypes of intrinsic, identified, and extrinsic motivations rose over the year. Concerning BPNs, perceived autonomy and perceived competence increased for these two classes. In class two, neither intrinsic motivation nor perceived autonomy rose as a year. In other words, the sequence of informal and then formal cooperative learning, or the mixed use of these, appeared to have had a more positive effect on first-year university students in this study than engaging in formal and then informal cooperative learning. In addition to this, A motivation remained unchanged for all classes throughout the study. Furthermore, perceived relatedness was affected regardless of sequence or type of cooperative learning. Limitations of this study, study are as follows. As mentioned at the beginning, results which I presented today were part of a larger study which uses a mixed methods approach. Because I only presented results from analysis of the quantitative data, reasons behind the results obtained for motivation and BPNs were not examined in depth. Analysis of qualitative data, which I am currently working on, should shed some light onto this. I would also like to point out that I am not trying to generalize from these results. I am trying to illustrate characteristics that the participants for this study appear to show. Analysis of student interview data may reveal individual students' motivation and BPN satisfaction in a deeper way. To conclude, let us go back to the research question to see what conclusions can be drawn from this study. The research question was, how does the sequence of engaging in informal and formal cooperative learning affect EFL students' motivation in a university classroom and BPNs? For students' motivation, engaging in informal, then formal cooperative learning and mixing these together raised intrinsic motivation in this study. There are several possible explanations for this. One is that the rise of intrinsic motivation of those who engaged in informal cooperative learning in the spring semester was because participants were content with opportunities to get to know each other. 
Participants of this study were first-year university students who did not know each other very well in April. Thus, informal cooperative learning, where one gets to switch group members frequently, may have met their need of wanting to get acquainted with one another. According to SDT, fulfillment of relatedness needs in and of itself does not raise intrinsic motivation. However, fulfilling relatedness needs can feed into the increase in intrinsic motivation. On the contrary, formal cooperative learning, which lasts longer and requires more cooperation as a team, may have been stressful for students who engaged in this only, especially in the spring semester. This may explain why intrinsic motivation did not rise significantly for those who participated in formal cooperative learning from April 2019. Another reason for the rise in intrinsic motivation for those who initially engaged in informal cooperative learning could be due to the nature of intrinsic motivation. Intrinsic motivation tends to be characterized by enjoyment of an activity in the moment rather than focusing on future benefits of completing an activity, such as meeting a goal. Intrinsically motivated students may see their intrinsic motivation level decline when they participate in more goal-oriented activities. This is because they may be forced to alter their individual goals to the group goal, at least for a certain period of time. Identified and extrinsic motivations rose regardless of sequence of cooperative learning. There are three possible explanations for this. One could be that Japanese students learn English in an EFL environment, not an ESL, where they are frequently reminded that English will help them in the future. This belief may be understood by students, but many may not have internalized this yet because they do not use English on a daily basis. The second reason could be because for Japanese students, much emphasis is placed on getting good scores from when they are young. Thus, they may feel a strong need to do well on exams. Lastly, timing of the study could have increased identified and extrinsic motivation. The study was conducted before COVID-19 when Japan was psyched to be hosting the 2020 Olympics. There was an atmosphere that Japanese people should learn English in order to communicate with foreigners ahead of the Olympics. Any of these components or any of these combined may have helped increase identified and extrinsic motivation. A motivation remained unchanged in all classes. According to Ryan 1995, A motivation results from not valuing an activity. Moreover, Hiroto and Seligman, 2000, no, 1975, suggested it involves not expecting a desirable outcome. However, as mentioned before, Japanese students are told that English will help them in the future. Thus, it is unlikely the students would feel a strong sense of A motivation. This idea is further strengthened by the fact that before the study, the mean for A motivation was already low at all classes at all classes, with class 1 at 1.94, class 2 at 1.82, and class 3 at 2.27. As for BPNs, engaging in informal and then formal cooperative learning and informal and formal cooperative learning together raised perceived autonomy. Many of the first year students had not conducted cooperative learning in high school, especially in their last year as they prepared for university entrance exams. Comparing this experience to their university English classroom, where a majority of the lessons contained cooperative learning activities, students may have appreciated the autonomy given to them, regardless of the amount. Usually, formal cooperative learning is more autonomous and informal cooperative learning is less autonomous. This is because in informal cooperative learning, teachers specifically predetermine the task and students have few choices in how they can conduct it. In formal cooperative learning, teachers explain the structure, but students have greater choice in how they carry out the project. For students who experience much autonomy through formal cooperative learning in the spring semester, participating in informal cooperative learning after that could well have decreased their appreciation for it. Perceived competence rose regardless of sequence of cooperative learning. The increase in competence may have been due to two reasons. The first involves content of the course. The university English course which the students were taking involved childcare English, which does not use complicated English. The second could have been because students had many scaffolding experiences. 
Perceived relatedness remained unchanged over the year regardless of sequence of popular learning. The rise and fall of relatedness could possibly be explained by previous student experiences in English class. In spring, students may have appreciated group activities, but as they got to know each other better, they may have lost their sense of appreciation to work with friends and instead became more selective in who they wanted to team up with. Here are my references. And thank you for your undivided attention.